Uh, sure, yeah. Thank you so much. Thank you. All right, we're about three to four minutes away from Denver joining us up here right now. <clears throat> the locker room is open. The Denver locker room is open right now at 716. It's 716, Denver locker room is open. It'll stay open for about 30 minutes or as long as they're up here. BU's will then open when BU comes up here. So just a couple of reminders. Uh, we'll take an opening statement from coach. We'll take questions for the student athletes. When there are no more questions for the student athletes, we'll dismiss them back and then take questions for coach after that. A few notes here. It's the, the third two to one game in a row for Denver, the first games of the season. I'm sure everyone has heard that by now for Denver that were two to one. Obviously, they've won all three. In the games in which they've consecutively scored fewer than four goals, which has happened three times now, Denver's now seven and four. Seven and four in consecutive games when they scored fewer than four goals. Last time a champion has played multiple overtime games in an NCAA tournament was in 1999, when Maine won. Ninety-nine. Ninety-nine in Anaheim, when Maine won.
So Denver also only took one penalty in that game. That's happened 19 times now. The most recent time was Denver versus Minnesota in the 2022 championship game. The team only took one penalty there. Minnesota State, sorry. It's on the second line. Yeah, so 19 times now. There was the most recent time. <laughs> I believe we're looking at an 8-10 puck drop for the second semifinal. 8-10. Guys? Two more coming? Okay. Shortly or should we? Okay, okay. Okay, yeah, no problem. All right, Coach, first up, congratulations. Uh, when you're in and settled, we'll start off by taking an opening statement from you on tonight's game. Thank you. Um, another just battle of a hockey game for us. Um, thought BU started excellent. Um, thought we were a little bit on our heels uh, to start. Thought we'd have more time and space. But as the game went on, I thought our guys got more comfortable um, with the pace of the game, started winning races, um, able to put them on their heels. A little bit um, in the second and third. Um, just a great hockey game. A lot of respect for BU. And again, congratulations to them on a great year. We've been in three of these 2-1 games now. And, um, you know, they, they can all go either way. I think uh, Matty Davis sitting here, again, was, was excellent for us, especially as a best player in the first period in overtime. And um, Bros, uh, Tristan here, finds a, a way to get one in the back of the net. So really proud of our guys, the effort, the resilience. and. Uh, we're staring 10 in the mirror on Saturday. Really excited for that opportunity. And, uh, you know, can't wait for, for that moment. All right, a reminder, we'll take questions for the student athletes first. So just throw your hand up there so I can see you and get you in a queue. We're going to start with Jess, and then we'll come up to the front, move over to Randy, and then go to you. Jess Myers from the Rink Live. Tristan, be honest. When you came to this building as a kid, did you have a dream of a moment like this? I mean, yeah, I think that's what every kid dreams of, uh, to do something like that for your team. So definitely. Mark Kislett, uh, Denver Gazette, for Tristan and uh, Massimo. Uh, how much do you owe to Maddie there for getting you through that first period? Yeah, he's been unbelievable. Um, he showed up when we need him the most, so we're super proud of him. 
Randy? I was just going to say, yeah, just big time performance by him. Uh, three straight games, so um, it was awesome stuff. Randy Johnson, Minneapolis Star Tribune. Uh, Tristan, can you take us through your goal? What happened on there? What, what did you see? And how did you get the pass and everything? Um, yeah, I just remember back checking, and uh, I kind of got turned over to Barron's, um, kind of at the left face off dot, and then he kind of made a nice little pass to me into the middle. I knew it was kind of a two on one. Um, Riz kind of had a little bit of a step on the guy, and we done that drill yesterday, uh, doing two on ones, and a few times I scored, just kind of like no looking, trying to shoot five hole, and um, I just, I don't know, I kind of just blacked out in that moment and <laughs> happened to go in. Chances here tonight. Uh, you got robbed. One of the three uh, uh, huge saves that Karen made. Was that something that your team just said? We got to keep shooting. Got to keep getting pucks on net. Um, is some one of them's going to go in? Yeah, absolutely. Um, just like Coach Carl said, these two-one games can go either way, and, and there's bounces that happen throughout the game. But you just got to stick with it and um, you know keep playing because because those bounces happen. But um, you're still in a in a tight hockey game, so. Reminder to just say your name and affiliation um, for us. Sam Sally, do you clarify for Massimo? Um, how did it feel to be back out there, and what was it like, um, kind of seeing this team go through the journey of the uh, regionals and not being able to be out there? Yeah, um, it was awesome to be back out there. I missed it. So, um, you know, great game to jump back into. But the boys have been unbelievable. A lot of people have stepped up, um, and so it's been really cool to see, you know, different guys play different roles and the success our team has. We'll stay right there, Jimmy. Good. Go over there. Nick Tremoroli, let's go du.com. Matt, do you guys feel like you were, we were prepared for a game like this after the last two games? You know, you, uh, you guys seemed battle tested through those two games. Did you feel more prepared maybe than even BU felt? Well, I mean, like we were, we, we are 100% battle tested. And I mean, I don't know how BU came in. I mean, they had a tough regional as well, but. Uh, we were just confident in all aspects of our game coming in. I mean, we had to win in different ways throughout the regional, and uh, tonight we were able to showcase a little bit more skill than we were in Springfield. So uh, we were just we're just extremely confident and feel battle tested. Yeah. Hey, uh, Ryan Kennedy from the Hockey News. A uh, question for Tristan. Obviously, you came to Denver through the transfer portal. What has this program meant for your development to get you to this point today? Um. Yeah, that's a good question. I mean, uh, uh, you know, it's it's obviously meant a lot. I mean, I came in here, didn't necessarily have the best freshman year, um, you know, but this coaching staff, all the guys in the room from the moment I got here just took me in, you know, to their arms and um, allowed me to just grow and gain confidence. And, um, you know, it just, it just meant uh, pretty much everything to me. I mean, to find a place like this coming, coming through the transfer portal, it's uh, certainly, you know, a blessing. So. I'm, all I got. Anything further for the players? All right, guys, thank you. You can head back to the locker room. Congratulations. Questions for Coach? Oh, sorry, right in the middle here. Good job, guys. Hey, Coach, Jackson Molin, uh, Let's Play Hockey. Uh, you, uh, no penalties in, in a, in a fought Frozen Four game. I mean, what was that? Was that? Something coaching staff that you guys said to the guys, or was that within the room where it's just, you know, don't take one? Um, yeah, I don't know. I mean, we, we did it two years ago against Michigan. We didn't take a penalty um, in the semifinal, and I thought that was a big part of our success. And, um, you know, tonight, thought the same. Uh, we spent, you know, better part of three practices talking about Celebrini and Hudson on the power play and, and how to defend that. And, um, you know, to not have to, to see that was, I think, a, a big factor in the victory. Um, they got really good players on the power play, and I, I thought our, our guys' discipline was, like I said, a huge part of our win. And every time we got a power play, a lot of our message on the bench was, you know, don't, don't make an easy call for the refs, keep our six on the ice, stay above them, angle. Um, don't put the game in the refs' hands to, you know, make a call going back the other way. So. I thought the guys did a, an excellent job with their discipline tonight. Uh, Sean next. We'll go. Sorry, we'll go right here and then Sean next. Uh, Corey Mass is at the Denver Post. On the first goal, was that Tristan's first shift of the game? We were trying to figure that out, and just maybe what if it wasn't just what his impact as a 13th forward and 
in his Yeah, game. no, he was good. I, it was not his first shift, um, I don't believe. He got, he got shift in the, in the first for sure. Um, but yeah, he comes in the night as our 13 forward. Um, you know, he's been a big part of why we went 12-1-1 and without Rizzo in the lineup. Um, you know, he's, he's been really good for us. He's been fighting through an injury of his own, um, putting his body on the line for the guys and, and for the team. And, uh, you know, really, really happy for him that he was able to get rewarded. Uh, scoring that goal has done everything right this year. Hasn't always had the most opportunity, uh, but a total team first guy. And um, again, couldn't be happier for him. Sean Davis, USCHO. Coach, obviously um, your um, offense has been held in check these last three games, yet you've been able to find ways to get it done. How have you been able to do it? What's been the key to this uh, three-game run for you guys? Great goaltending, um, big part of it, obviously. Uh, we're also facing really good teams. Um, you know, it's very good defensively. I thought BU checked extremely well, especially in the first period. Um, and he made some ridiculous saves as well. The save on Thompson, um, the save on Devine on the power play. You know, he, he, he's a battler, competitor. I thought he made it real hard on us. Uh, made saves through traffic that, you know, we thought had chances to go in. And um, so you tip your hat to him. And I thought both goaltenders, you know, were, were the team's two best players tonight. Our, our guy happened to make one more save than theirs. You know, and that's, that's these games uh, this time of year sometimes. Yeah, go ahead, Adam. Coach Adam Woden, College Hockey News. Uh, looked like you had trouble matching their intensity early on. And then Sean Barron's had that hit on Celebrini. I don't know if that had direct anything to do with kind of waking guys up a bit, but just talk about his evolution as a defensive player, someone who can make those kind of plays. Yeah, it was a, it was a great angle, um, you know, making uh, Macklin come through him on that play. You know, he kept his shoulder down and um, it was obviously a big hit. Did, is that what sparked us? I don't. I'd have to think back, and, and I don't remember the exact time of when that happened. But yeah, obviously made mention of it. They they started quicker than we did. I think maybe a little bit in our head, we felt like there was going to be a little bit more time and space based on what we played last weekend, what we watched in uh, the Sioux Falls Regional of them. And I give them credit. They, they were winning all the 50-50 races um, to the walls. I thought in the second period, we started to win some of those. When you win the first one, you, it's easier to win the second and third one in the offensive zone. And that led to some of our uh, possession time that we were able to generate. And um, Sean, to answer the other part of your question, um, has been a really good defender for us, I think, from day one. but. Um, you know, it's, it's hard to do it at sub six, um, you know, at this level and, and even harder at the next level. But his intensity, um, his angling, the, the habits and, and details of his game um, certainly give him a, a chance to, to do that at the next level. And he, he's excelling at it at our level. So we got, we're going to do three more. We're gonna, I can't see over here. Sorry. We're going to go here. We're going to go to Ryan and then back up to front. And that'll be the last one for coach. All right, uh, David. Avash Kalra, College Hockey News. Um, I think you've, at, you've talked about in the past how well your team communicates on the bench, how well it communicates in the locker room, but how, how well does, do the guys communicate when they're on the ice? The, the tying goal uh, seems to be a good example of just uh, their, their communication out there. Yeah, it's, um, I don't know, it's important at, at all levels, but it seems like the higher you get, communication on the ice is, is more and more critical. We're fortunate in Denver to have uh, a lot of NHL teams come into the city, they, they use our facility to practice. Um, seems like we have a team at least every month during the season and our guys get to observe NHL players um, in practice. And I, one of the things that we make them aware of is how much the guys talk, even in practice. And there's nobody in the building so you can hear it. And it's, it's a habit, it's a learned skill. Um, I think it's an inconsistent thing with uh, players at our level. Uh, but when it's on, uh, it certainly makes the game a lot easier when they're, when they're talking to each other out there. And there's no doubt Tristan was, was calling for that puck from Miko. And I thought our talk got better as the game went on. We talked about winning races, but I thought our communication got better as the game went on too. We were, we were panicking a little bit with the puck in the first period. A lot of that's talk and guys away from the puck trying to help the puck carrier out. And, and that got better as the game went on. Ryan? Uh, Ryan Kennedy from the Hockey News. Uh, other than scoring crucial overtime goals, what do you like about what Tristan brings to this Denver team? Um, I think he's fully bought in to, to being a pioneer. He's, he's two feet in. Um, he's a great teammate. 
um, has stepped up in a big time way when when Rizzo went down, and I think you know really gotten an opportunity um, to to play a little bit bigger role um, in the middle of the rink. I think that keeps him involved more. Um, we can just tell his care, the way he's practiced the last um, you know month and a half, two months, the the pace and energy that he's bringing to the rink every day um, doesn't go unnoticed by us or, or his teammates, and and then it's obviously leading to to the results for him on the ice, and and that's all players. I mean, the better you practice, the better you play, and and that's where we've seen him probably take the biggest growth, and his his play in games has become more consistent because of that. Last one for Coach right up front. What did you think of Massimo tonight, and just sort of what what lift did he give you know to coming back? Yeah, I thought he was good. I mean, if you tracked our lines tonight, there was a lot of different combinations. We knew it would be that way before we kind of hopefully settled on something. And um, I thought we did that probably, you know, midway through the second. And I thought our team game went, took off a little bit. After that, I, I thought to Massimo specifically, a um, little bit rusty in the first period. Um, the speed is not the same um, in games as it is in, in practice fully. And so, uh, it's been, you, I, thought, I just thought you could see the rust from taking 14, uh, being out for 14 games. And, um, but in the second period, I thought he was our guy who was possessing pucks, attacking on the inside uh, better than anybody else, drawing you know, two, three guys to him, opening up the weak side um, you know, when he was attacking. So that was expected. And, and as he got better, he got more ice. Um, he started playing with uh, Bros and Divine, where he started the game with um, King and Capone. So um, I thought there was a lot to like, and, and I would expect him to be even better on Saturday. All right, Coach, thank you very much. Congratulations. Great. Thanks, everybody. All right, Coach, uh, when you're settled and ready, we'll just start off by taking an opening statement from you in tonight's game. Um, yeah, uh, you know, really disappointing. Um, you know, I really feel for our seniors, um, they, they've done a tremendous job uh, the last two years of, you know, I feel like reestablishing the culture at BU and what it means to, to play and be a Terrier. So I, I want to thank those guys. Um, Case coming back for his fifth year. Um, you know, we were certainly happy he did, you know, for him to get another chance to actually play in the Frozen Four was great to see. And again, tonight, the margin of error in these one and dones is um, it's very slim. So we made some mistakes that cost us. And um, you know, there's no tomorrow for us. So it's a tough tournament to, very tough tournament to win. All right, guys, just a reminder, the BU locker room is open. So if you want to go there, you can head there now. Open at 737. Uh, we'll take questions for the student athletes. Again, just raise your hand so I can see them, especially if you're standing up on the side. It's tougher. We'll start up right here up front with Bell. Uh, Bell Fraser, Boston Hockey Blog. Case, just what can you say about the way Karan played tonight? Kept you guys in it there? I mean, he played unbelievable. Probably me on sports, sports Center a couple times tomorrow morning. Um, he kept us in that hockey game, especially late in the second there when they're making the push. Can't say enough good things about him. Um, Great guy off the ice. Got to know him coming in. Um, 
Unbelievable player. I'm going to mess him next year. Gracie. Gracie Davenport, Boston Hockey Blog. Matthew, just what can you say about your last year, your development, you know, transferring from Brown, making it all the way to the frozen floor and playing every game along the way? Uh, yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm very grateful uh, for Boston University, obviously, Coach Pandolfo and, and all, the, all the players and coaches that welcomed me um, to the team. Um, I learned a lot from everyone. Um, it's uh, obviously not the way we wanted to end things. Um, really, really sad for obviously the seniors and grad students like Case. Um, really wanted to to win for them, and um, I, I, but yeah, I I'm gonna miss all those guys, and um, I'm just very thankful for the chance to have played with them. Uh, Brian Foisey, Boston Hockey Blog for Case. Um, you know, Pando talking about how you, know, you guys have sort of rebuilt the culture. What are the core tenets of that culture that you want to see staying here at BU after, after you leave? I mean, we have, we have five we talk about in the preseason, but I think the biggest two are respect and compete. It's what this program's about. It's what the history's built on. Um, yeah. Um, compete playing playing as hard as you can because you never know when it's going to end so yep Matt. Uh, Jay um, what were you looking for at the end there with the we'll take uh, questions for the players first oh, the players. and then we'll come back to Jay yep anything additional for the players back to Bell up front Bob Fraser, Boston Hockey Blog. For either of you guys, obviously not the way you want it to end, but just what's the biggest thing you take away from this season from what you did accomplish? I mean, for me, obviously bringing this team back to the Frozen Four. But, like, away from the rink, the, the group we had in that locker room was, was a special group, special group of people, um, young guys to, to us old guys sitting up here. So... Um, it, it's special when you have a group like that. It, it makes coming to the rink every day a lot of fun. Um, the building those relationships with guys is is something that you're gonna hold on to for for the rest of my life. So, Matthew, same question. Um, yeah, I mean, it's uh, again, it comes down to to the group of guys in the locker room. Um, I, I think that everyone. Um, had an amazing year. Um, every single guy grew, um, not not only as a hockey player but as a person as well. Um, obviously, being one of the older ones, older guys on the team, um, just seeing these young guys that are obviously going to have amazing careers um, moving forward, um, and, and seeing their growth, um, and then just again the seniors, the guys that have been here before me, um, just teach, really teach me what it is to be a, a B, BU Terrier. Um, and, and that's, that's what I'm pr very proud, um, to be a BU Terrier. Um, I know I get referred to as the brown goalie a lot, um, but uh, I'm through and through a, a BU Terrier. I'll take one more for the players if it's there. All right, guys, thank you. Head back to the locker room. Appreciate it. Questions for Coach. We'll start with Matt. Just a, state your name and affiliation for asking the question, please. Uh, it's Matt Porter, Boston Globe. Sorry about that. Uh, Jay, just uh, the challenge at the end of, uh, of overtime. What were you looking for there? I, I, I guess the, there was a potential cross check, but um, there obviously was nothing there. We'll go to Jess and then Bell. In the rink live, yeah, midway through the game, I think Denver had six shots on goal. Was there a kind of blood in the water moment there where you felt like you could maybe put your team away, uh, put their team away? Um, yeah, I, I thought the first period we played very well. Um, the first 12 minutes of the second period, I think they may have had five or six shots. And I thought we shot ourselves in a foot a little bit by not continuing to play behind them. Um, they had the one shift, they got a little bit of momentum, 
and, and then you know they found a way to score a goal, and it seemed like they you know that they got some life from that. Yeah, it's been a little bit of an issue the whole year for our group in the second period, um, not finding ways to put teams away. So yeah, I would have liked to see us, you know, bear down and get a two-goal lead, and um, but it didn't happen. So um, they got some life at, at the end of the second, and that, that was a big momentum change. Go. Bill Fraser, Boston Hockey Blog, coach, the penalty kill. How big that, did that come up for you guys? Stan Stevens, Cade Weber, Case McCarthy. Penalty kill was excellent uh, from the goalie on out. Uh, they, they were sacrificing. Um, we were pretty confident that they were going to get the job done. And then the one save Karan made was incredible. So um, good for them. Brian Fozzi, Boston Hockey Blog, coach, uh, zero penalties in the game for Denver. What kind of a layer of complexity does that add to the game when you have to keep playing five on five and it's not working as well as you wanted it to be? Um, I don't know. You guys watch the game, so I don't know if there was any penalties out there or not. But um, you know, we didn't get on the power play at all. They get on four times, um, but we still have to. That's not the reason we lost the game. We, we, we have to find ways to put teams away, uh, five on five. And, you know, we didn't do that. Gracie. Gracie Davenport, Boston Hockey Blog. Coach, you always talk about how tough it is to win at this stage, having only won it one time in your four frozen fours as a player. So just what's the message to your team, especially to those younger players? Well, I think they've learned that it's pretty difficult. Um, and I've, I've said it, that it's, <laughs> it's these little things over the course of the game that if you don't do them well, you could end up on the wrong side of it. And there was just a couple times, some little things that, that cost us. We didn't put the puck behind them. Anytime we put the puck behind them tonight, we, we had some success. Um, a couple times we didn't, it gave them a little bit of life. And th th that's the difference in games like this. You don't have another opportunity. Uh, of course, do you need a little bit of puck luck and bounces here and there? Of course you do. Um, but you got to create that too. And we didn't create enough of that tonight after the way we played the first half of the game. We'll go back to Bell. Bell Fraser, Boston Hockey Blog. Just what has Lane Hudson meant to this program the past two seasons in terms of getting you guys back to the national stage and you know building that reputation again? Yeah, Lane is a he's a special player. Um, he, he's he's fun to watch. He com, you know he competes. He wants to win so bad. Um, he's been great uh, the way he competes every day in practice. He, he's the type of kid that is looking to get better every day. Um, he you know pushes his teammates with the way he competes. So um, Lane's been excellent for us, and you know we'll see what happens. But um, he's been a great terrier. Take one more for coach if it's there. All right, Coach. Thank you. Appreciate Thanks. it.